In this video I'm going to look at electrolysis and that's simply splitting a substance up using electricity. The substance that's going to be split up needs to be an ionic substance and just a reminder there for you that ionic substances are metals bonded to non-metals and obviously these substances contain ions which are positive and negatively charged particles. The substance being split up has to be molten or in solution and that's because the ions need to be able to move. So the example we're going to look at is the electrolysis of molten lead bromide and that's got the chemical formula Pb for lead Br2 and the little L there in the, in the bracket this is what we call a state symbol that's telling us that the lead bromide is in the liquid state and so therefore it's been melted. So if you just imagine a tank full of solid lead bromide, you can see I've changed the state symbol there to S and let's imagine that this is heated up to a very high temperature. What's going to happen? It's going to melt so you can see the state symbols change to L now and what that's going to do is it's going to mean that the ions are no longer sort of bound together, attracting each other. They've broken free from the ionic bond, the attraction, and they are freed up as the ions now. And obviously because they're freed up, they can move around. So let's imagine now that this molten lead bromide is fed into what we call an electrolysis cell. So essentially it's still just a big tank but it's got a negatively charged electrode and a positively charged electrode. And you can see there I've named these electrodes now. The positive electrode is called an anode and the negative electrode is called a cathode. So in very very simple terms what's going to happen now, I'm sure you can actually work it out just by looking at the diagram. The negatively charged ions are going to rush to the positive electrode because opposite charges attract each other and the positive ion, the lead 2 plus ion, is going to be attracted to the cathode. Again, opposite charges attract. So hopefully, so far so good, that all makes sense, it's nice and simple. What we need to do now is work out what actually happens to these bromide ions when they get to the anode and what happens to the lead 2 plus ions when they get to the cathode. So you can see underneath the tank now I've drawn a dot and cross diagram for one of these bromide ions. So bromine's in group 7, so we've got 7 crosses and the extra electron is the one that gives it the negative charge. So because it's negatively charged, it's attracted to the anode, the positive electrode, something's going to happen. Well, what happens is the bromide ion gives up that electron. So what are we going to make from that? Well, there's the electron that's being given up. And of course, what's left is a bromine atom. So like the original bromine atom, before it gained the negative charge, with its seven outer electrons. Now, there won't just be one bromide ion that goes to the anode, there'll be quite a few. So there's another one doing exactly the same thing. So have a think, what could these two isolated bromine atoms now do? And of course, they can form a covalent bond, these odd electrons Single electrons can pair up and form a bromine molecule now. So we've formed Br2. So overall, what's happened is two bromide ions have given up two electrons, one each, and the two individual bromine atoms have combined to form the covalently bonded bromine molecule. And there it is written up as a regular equation without all the dots and crosses. Now because the bromide ions have lost electrons, so each bromide ion has lost an electron each, we call this an oxidation process 
because oxidation involves the loss of electrons. And if you just think about the word oil, it can help you remember that oxidation is loss of electrons. So you can see I've added those two electrons onto the diagram of the electrolysis cell and that each bromide ion gives up its outer electron and they would start to move around the circuit. So there they are there on their way to the cathode. So there they are, they've arrived at the cathode. Let's have a look at what happens there now. So there's the dot and cross diagram for a lead 2 plus ion and we typically would draw an empty outer shell for a positively charged ion. Underneath here, which we don't need to show, is a full outer shell. So these lead 2 plus ions are going to pick up those two electrons. So because we're adding two electrons to a 2 plus ion, we generate a particle with no charge now, no overall charge. So what have we made? We've made a lead atom. So there's the half equation for the process taking place at the cathode. And you can see it's the opposite way around to before because this time we're gaining electrons. So this is what we call a reduction process. And the way to remember it is the word rig. Reduction is gain of electrons. So one for you to try now. If you have a go at working out what would happen if you electrolyzed molten sodium chloride, so that's NaCl liquid, think about what's going to go to the anode, what's going to go to the cathode, what are the half equations that take place at each electrode. Remember the half equations are those tricky equations with the electrons in and finally which process is the oxidation process and which one is the reduction process. So if you pause the video, have a go at all of that, and then I'll go through the answer. So first of all, we need to start by thinking about which ions are present in molten sodium chloride. So we've got a sodium ion Na+, and a chloride ion Cl-. And so the chloride ion would be attracted to the anode, and the sodium ion would be attracted to the cathode, because opposite charges attract. So what's going to happen at the anode? This chloride ion is going to arrive there and it's going to give up its electron. So there it is on the other side of the arrow. What will it become? A chlorine atom. Now remember there's more than just one of each of these ions in the tank. There'll be absolutely billions of them. So let's imagine two chloride ions get to the anode. Each one's going to give up an electron. So two would give up two electrons. What would two isolated chlorine atoms do? Of course, they would form a covalent bond and make a chlorine molecule. So the half equation would look like that. So there's one of the electrons on its way around to the cathode. You can see it's arrived there now. So what do you think is gonna happen? Well, the sodium ion can gain that electron and become a sodium atom. In terms of oxidation and reduction, well if we look at this one first, what's the chloride ion doing or what are these two chloride ions doing? They're losing electrons, so that is oxidation. What are the sodium ions doing? They're gaining electrons so that is reduction. 